welcome again. Uh, in this lecture, I will introduce uh, a toy version of a very uh, popular a pioneering uh, CPU called MIPS. So, I am going to refer to this uh, toy version of MIPS as M MIPS, M probably stand, uh, standing for mini MIPS or micro MIPS. Okay. So, this MIPS is a pioneering RISC CPU, RISC stands for reduced Reduced complexity instruction set computer. This complexity in the bracket, it is typically read out as reduced instruction set computer. Uh, the redu reduction is not real in terms of number of instructions, reduction is in that sense of the complexity. The simplest, the instructions are quite simple, and the simplicity of the instruction set leads to simple and elegant microarchitecture. And uh, microarchitecture, by that we mean the data path and the controller. Uh, which kind of define that uh, the CPU. So, later on in couple of subsequent lectures, uh, we will describe a multi cycle data path implementation of micro MIPS as an illustration of the concept of an FSM driving the data path. Okay. Which we have already illustrated in the other simple simpler examples of GCD and shift add based multiplication. Uh, CP microarchitecture has always been an interesting and a wholesome example of digital system. Okay, so that's that's what makes it kind of relevant in the context of this course also. And a VLSI or FPGA implementation aspects of a CP microarchitecture, this mu this is mu architecture microarchitecture. This forms an important component of the pedagogy of VLSI design. Okay. So, we will be able to address in this couple of lectures some aspects of implementation issues and comment on it at least and there is you will get some pointers to go further than this towards more specialized courses on processor design or you know VLSI architecture design. So, there is a good reason for a good example of this kind which is a very standard example in various courses it is specifically on my computer architecture and digital system design. So, in micro MIPS micro architecture we will be focusing on a very small subset of instructions that would illustrate, but although it is small subset it would still illustrate most of the important fundamental ideas in the micro architecture and the implementation. So, this M MIPS micro MIPS or mini MIPS is a 32 bit architecture by that I mean uh, the instructions are 32 bit wide and the data words are also 32 bit wide. Okay. There is good amount of uniformity in this RISC risk processors which make things simpler to design, simpler to analyze, simpler to like you know uh, implement. So, and at the top level at a behavior level a processor is described by its instruction set architecture. We kind of understand what kind of instruction that processor is capable of executing, execute, executing. and uh, then the data path and the controller are designed to facilitate execution of this but those particular instructions with the help of components like ALU, uh, register files, multiplexers, shifters and so on and so forth. Okay. So, this, uh, this even the small subset of MIPS which we call M MIPS is, going to be, is capable of very standard arithmetic logic, data movement, a uh, branch and jump kind of instructions. Okay. So, I am just saying some standard things, uh, there is not, nothing yet to focus uh, specifically on. So, it is a standard uh, CPU, a toy example of a standard CPU that we are going to consider here. It will, although it is small, it will still illustrate most of the concepts. So, for example, any standard CPU, I will draw it here again. A standard CPU should be capable of executing an add instruction, arithmetic instruction. So, a typical example of arithmetic instruction is add. So, MIPS in particular has this uh, like as an instruction by which it sort of uh, to which the arguments are the destination a kind of index which is which specifies the destination 
I will tell you what exactly that 4 means or dollar 4 means and a pair of source indices. Okay. Uh, and the MIPS has one, the uh, micro architecture of micro MIPS has a so called register file, which is a collection of registers. Every register is 32 bit wide okay? and there are 32 such uh, registers. So, these registers are going to be referred to as R 0 or X 0, R 1 and so on, R 31. And in particular, this reg, uh, R 0 is really not a set of memory location, it is all hardwired to ground, okay, all zeros. So, it would look as if uh, the register number 0 always contains 0. Okay. The trick is to hardwire it to the ground. Okay. And the other 31 registers are general purpose, they are I mean most of them are general purpose and every one of them can be written to. This one you cannot the R 0 you cannot write to it always contains the constant. Okay. So, now this coming back to this instruction this 4, 3, 6 they refer to the indices of this uh, of the registers in the register file. Okay. So, this particular instruction the semantics of it is that uh, two of the, I mean this two register this two indices specify this the source registers from where the source operands will be would be read out and then they will be added and the result of the addition is going to be uh, kept in the register with the index 4. So, R 4 register with the index 4 is going to be loaded with the result of addition on these two operands. Which two operands? Uh, uh, the contents of registers at the index 3 and the register number 6. Okay. So, R 3 and R 6. So, in this particular instruction, the contents of R 3 and R 6 are going to be read out and and the result is going to be uh, somehow routed back to r4 okay something like that okay yeah so uh, the data path is going to uh, definitely have this register file with which has 32 registers the data path would also need to support because the instructions needs to support addition, there should be a support for addition instruction. So, there must be an adder subtractor kind of ALU and uh, there should be some set of routers like multiplexers which will help the things go read I mean which will route the data from appropriate register it towards the ALU and the result of the ALU back to the register file. There will be more things of this kind required. So, we will develop, we will gradually kind of evolve the picture. We, we can evolve this complete micro architecture by understanding the need of each and every instruction of this kind, but then the, that is quite a routine exercise. So, I will be slightly, I mean, I will be covering this a bit fast at a fast pace. Okay. Yes, now specifically, what we need to understand is that how, how the instructions are represented. So, let us get back to the same example an instruction like add okay so clearly uh, like you know recall what this means is r4 so this 4 is this uh, the index of the desti destination register and 3 and 6 are the indices of the source registers okay this the encoding of is as follows. As I remarked every instruction uh, in this CPU is going to be 32 bit wide okay. and the this uh, 6 MSBs most significant bit of this 32 bit 
from 0 to, uh, to 31 are the opcode of add. Okay. Then we have 5 bits uh, representing the we have 5 bits representing this particular 3 okay, that is the first source index. So, uh, that is this number 0 0 0 1 1. So, this is equivalent to 3 okay, that whatever we are specifying as one of the source operands. Then this second uh, set of 5 bits is going to like you know encode this uh, number 6 which is to be interpreted as this second second uh, source in index okay and then number 4 which is the uh, index of the destination register for the addition operation and that is 00100 0, 0, 0. so we are going to use 5 bits for for every such index because there are going this all this uh, three indices in an instruction like add which operates on a pair of registers, the contents of pair of registers and it puts a result back in the in one of the registers in the register file. So, this is called an R type of instruction, R type instruction. Okay. So, just purely working on the register information in the register file, no role of any data memory or anything else here. Okay. So, so, there are we require for, because there are 32 registers we require 5 bits to encode the indices of them and this 5 bits this triple of 5 bits is going to contain this index of the source, index of the source, another source and index of the destination. So, this covers about this covers yeah, up to here we have used up 16 bits, 6 bits for this and 10 bits for this and then this is 5 more bits in the remaining 11 bits right uh, 10 bit number 10 to bit number 0 we have some extra information in the context of add it, it will also like you know there will be some the uh, opcode of add will, will not be com completely uh, like described by this 6 bits in fact this 6 bits color coupled with uh, the think it is again 6 more bits. This, this bits and this bits together is going to be uh, is going to, uh, going to indicate that this particular instruction is an add instruction okay. working on this pair of op indices or describing the source and this index sorry this pair of indices describing the source operands and this in this particular index describing the destination operator. This uh, we will ignore what this, this this is where some uh, for some shift instruction the amount of uh, amount of shift is described here. Again this this requires 5 bits, 5 bits can specify up to 32 sh number up to 32, 31. I think whatever this is in shift instruction this will be used as shift amount. Okay. We will not be bothered about that. In fact, we are not bothered about this like details at all. We just need to get an idea about how this in the simple manner these instructions are encoded. So, look at add then we look at couple of other examples and that, that would suffice us to get an idea about how the instruction looks like and how parts of the instruction are to be used for further processing in the micro, micro architecture. Okay. In general add has the like uh, structure that we are specify the index of a destination and also specify the index of a pair of sources okay. and semantics is R DST R SRC 1 plus R SRC 2. Okay. Similar to add instruction we have a subtract instruction with similar structure where this DST, SRC 1, SRC 2 are again numbers from 0 to 31 representing the, uh, the indices of the registers and other than these two arithmetic instructions, we have uh, the logical pair of logical instructions for doing bitwise OR and bitwise AND. Okay. Again the same 
triple op indices. Okay. And there is one interest, interesting instruction called set less than SLT again which is So, this, uh, this inst instruction is interesting, it has the semantics that all of the destination register is to be loaded with 1 provided the content of the re register indicated by the first source index is less than the content of the other register in which is indicated by the second source index in the instruction. If R of this if contents of register with this index is less than the contents of register with this index, then the destination register is going to be loaded with 1 that is we are set, setting the destination register to 1, setting means set, setting to 1 typically, otherwise we are setting it to 0 or we are clearing it otherwise. Right? So, it looks like uh, it looks a bit funny or like uh, to specialize, but it has a lot of use. Uh, I mean, it is going to be uh, very much useful in the comparisons, uh, comparison based branching, uh, because we are not going to, we are going to restrict our attention to a very simple sub small subset of this already reduced complexion instruction set. And that com instruction set should, should still be sufficient to uh, be able to do any kind of computation. So, this SLT in conjunction with a simple branch instruction, conditional branch instruction called BEQ, which again has a very similar, but slightly different, but uh, a regist mostly register based format. Branch EQ, EQ takes uh, a pair of uh, register indices source 1 and source 2 compares the contents of these two register, this register specified by these two indices and if they are found to be equal, then it would make a relative jump to an address specify, specified by some uh, constant specified here in the immediate field. This I M M stands for immediate, read this as immediate, just clarify it soon. Anyway, uh, I just uh, talked quickly talked about BQ because I mean brought it brought up the mention of it because BQ in con uh, this SLT in conjunction with BQ is going to be a very powerful kind of instruction. Okay, so more about that in any standard text on computer architecture, especially many textbooks which use MIPS as a vehicle to uh, describe the concepts of computer architecture and organization. Uh, standard books, uh, the one of the best known book is by Patterson Hennessy and so on. So, uh, many of you are might already be familiar with it. So, I am not going to spend time on this. So, other than uh, like you know, so we have seen some R type instructions like add, sub, or and SLT they work on they, uh, they are of the type instruction DS, destination register specifier and source pair of source register specifiers okay that's the format of this uh, such instruction there could be more of this in a, in the standard mips okay then other than this the, we have uh, so called i type instruction immediate type instructions in which not everything is from uh, from and registers and going to the register, but an example of that is uh, like you know immediate ver version of this add instruction. This, so, this is to be read as add immediate. Okay. So, add immediate to format of that is there is a destination specifier because finally, the result has to go somewhere, but what are the source operands? The source operands are not a pair of source indices, source register indices, but just one of them is going to come from a register specified by a particular by an index here or a source index and the other a source operand is going to come from this immediate field. Now, where is this immediate field? Uh, so, again look at the recall the 32 bit instruction format 
uh, for add it was like you know 6 bits were for opcode and similarly this six uh, most significant 6 bits will be used for opcode of add image yet. Then there will be 5 bits for the destination, no, so 5 bits for the SRC 1 the first source specifier. Then the next 5 bits will be for destination this particular DST information destination index will be stored in the next 5 bits that covers 16 bits and the remaining 16 bit will store a constant that is that is to be added to the content of this uh, register specified by SRC 1 and the result is to be loaded into stored into uh, this register specified by DST. So, let us look at an example add immediate it is simple anyway add immediate say dollar 4, dollar 6 and say 173 in decimal. So, this is going to be six bit of code of add add i and then this is the 0 0 1 0 0 sorry that is the destination right. So, this will be the source okay. and then followed by the index of the destination register that is 0 0 1 0 0 and 16 bits this is an 8 bit number right less than 250 255 0 0 0 0 1 128 plus 32 that is 160 plus okay this is 13 plus 32 45 plus 128 right so it will be the 16 bits this is number 4, this is number dollar 4, dollar 6. So, the semantics is that this R register number 4 is loaded with the addition of contents of register number 6 and this binary number which is this which is stored in this image at this 16 bits here. Note that compared to if you compare it with the uh, encoding of the add instruction, add instruction required 3 register indices 2 for so, uh, two for source and 1 for the destination. Here we require only 1 register index for source because the other source operand is going to come from the 16 bits here and the destination which would have been in the third set of uh, 5 bit uh, indices now it is going to be over here. Okay. So, this 16 bits are going to be free for holding an immediate uh, I mean holding a constant which is to be treated as an immediate operand. Okay. So, this is the immediate operand 16 bit immediate. Okay. This is the specifier of direct operand this is the specifier of immediate operand. And similar to add, there will be add i, there will be subtract i, immediate with the same format. So, this is an add i and subtract i, and similarly, or i, logical or and logical and immediate are examples of i type instruction, immediate type. I format instructions. Knowing knowing that opcode, figuring out that it's the instruction say add subtract immediate or add immediate, we know that the the bits of the inst instruction are to be interpreted as source address, source index, destination index, and 16 bits for immediate. Unlike in the case of the R type instructions, where we have to look at those uh, like you know. 
bunches of th th triple of 5 bits for two source indices and one destination index and the remaining some of the bits can be ignored. There is no role for immediate operand in the R type instructions like add, subtract or SLT and so on. So, I think SLT immediate is also available in the MIPS instruction set architecture. Now, other than this there is these are uh, arithmetic logic kind of instructions that we have seen so far and I also mentioned to you about a branch equal to instruction that will have a pair of there is no role of destination as such there is a pair of source indices SRC 1, SRC 2 and there is an immediate field. So, here in the encoding opcode of B Q will be here in the 6 bits and then SRC 1 will be here in the 5 bits, SRC 2 will be in next 5 bits and this 16 bits will be used for specifying a constant. What is the meaning of this semantics of this instruction? The program counter which stores the instruction or address of the next instruction is going to be updated with current program counter plus 4. Okay. We will just come to this plus 4, ignore it for a while. The main the role of immediate is this program counter is essentially updated with is like you know updated with this is treated as a relative offset and this is treated as the 16 bit number is treated as the as the word offset. Remember that I mentioned that uh, this uh, CPU is 32 bit wide, okay? but we are using the addresses at the byte level. Next word of 32 bit is going to be 4 bytes away and so this immediate field is, is being interpreted as the number of words uh, like relative offset in terms of number of words. So, this is, this is the amount uh, like by which I mean uh, this, this is the offset which is to be added to the program counter to get the next value of the program counter that is where the next instruction is supposed to be. So, this is the conditional jump which is of the relative jump kind and but the main thing is that this word, word offset has to be multiplied by 4. So, shifted left by 2 that will uh, shifting, shifting it left by 2 will have the effect of multiplying it by 4. So, this multiplication by 4 will convert this word offset into a byte offset. Okay. So, immediate So, offset in terms of byte address. So, assume that the memory can refer to an individual byte. So, the addresses refer to different bytes. So, if you want to go to the next word then you have to change the address by 4. Okay. This plus 4 you ignore it for a while we will talk about it later it is just one of the subtle features of uh, not too important. Uh, MIPS has taken a decision like you know just part of the architecture it was decided that the relative address the uh, relative offset would be offset would be added to PC plus 4. So, PC plus 4 is the default uh, next program counter right default value of the next program counter, but uh, so instead of like you know this that default is going to be updated by the offset. So, the compiler or the assembler should make sure that if you are if you try to encode the address of uh, like you know uh, jump if you try to encode a jump address then uh, you know it should not be just a difference between the address of that uh, place to jump and the current instruction but rather the difference between the the location where to jump minus pc uh, the address of the next instruction the default next instruction which is pc plus 4 that's why this funny thing Yeah, so, very quickly we will just wind up uh, the couple of other instructions. In fact, the important instructions that are left are like load and store. So, far the instructions that we have seen have been of the type arithmetic logic or the control flow branch and jump is also there unconditional jump, but let me just ignore it for a while. I mean it is not a very important I mean you can easily extrapolate by understanding the architecture for this instruction uh, what will be happening for jump. Okay. So, let us look at the memory 
the inst instructions which work with the memory. So, load and store these are memory uh, uh, based or other memory type instructions. They involve a memory access instruction sorry. It is absolutely necessary right just by doing uh, just by providing the ability to do arithmetic and control branch and jump you are not going to be able to uh, get uh, data or archive data in places registers are there 32 of them that is plenty for a uh, lot of applications, but not in general situations like where you might require a lot of data they will have to be stored in arrays, arrays could be much bigger than the number of registers that you have. So, uh, you need to make use of data memory and that is why to access the data memory you have you need to have a couple of instructions to provide uh, for that and one such is load this will load something from the memory the uh, syntax is load specify the target index the index of the register in which you are going to load something what you are going to load is specified over here. I am just using different kinds of names which will suggest the purpose. So, the semantics is the register whose index is given by this target target or target index between 0 to 31 this. So, this specifies a register from the register file that register is going to be loaded with contents of data memory at appropriate location which location at appropriate address the, that address is uh, in that address is calculated by reading out the contents of the register specified by this base plus and again we have this shifting left at home. Okay. So, the encoding of this instruction load instruction is going to be like this. This is 6 bit opcode for load 6 bits. Then you have uh, the 5 bit representation of this particular like you know the base uh, specifier base register specifier then 5 bit for specifying target and that leaves us with 16 bit okay so again again now this immediate is going to be regarded as as an offset because this is address calculation right this is calculation of an address of some location in the data memory and uh, since we have this 32 bit registers all the, the register if it is to be loaded with something it has to be loaded with 32 bit content and that has to be uh, like you know a word from the memory 4 byte word. So, this immediate 16 bit immediate if field is to, to treated as a word offset offset with respect to uh, the uh, the base which is specified in this uh, in the register with this particular index. Okay. So, this is as you can imagine you can easily imagine that this will this facility is provided for uh, array kind of index indexing. Okay. So, so this is also an I type instruction because there is a role of immediate field and corresponding I mean complementing load we have a store instruction whose syntax is similar and in, in, uh, index specifying a register and an index specifying another register and an immediate field, but this semantics is it store right storing something from like something from a register file into data memory. So, data memory at location certain location is going to be updated with the contents of contents of R t the register with the index R t and which location in data memory just the way it was done in case of load. 
So, address calculation is same as that for load, load instruction. This is going to be the base address that is why we call it register base register plus immediate Okay. By the way, I was just prompted that uh, I made a slight uh, missed one point in describing the branch uh, inst instruction. This is branch if equal to this is to be read. The cement the syntax of this is it takes a pair of source indices describing the registers which are to be used as source operands and specifies an immediate field as an offset uh, for relative jump, relative branch. Okay. So, meaning is that P c is to be updated with P c plus 4 plus so if and conditional right, if the contents of registers at the indices source 1 and source 2 are equal. So, recall this this is the op word offset like you know. So, to make convert it into byte offset we shifted by 2 left shifted by 2 and this p c plus 4 is the default next p uh, program counter. So, that that is up updated with this offset. So, if this is done if uh, the uh, equal to equality holds you know this the contents of these two registers uh, are equal. Otherwise, p c is going to be up updated with just the default again this plus 4 why because this is uh, the uh, I mean instructions are 32 bit wide and the addresses refer to bytes. So, we to refer to the next word the next instruction we have to add 4 address of next instruction word a word instruction is word long right 32 byte long it is a 32 bit architecture. We can study the variations of this anyway. Uh, but uh, right now for simplicity of the presentation we are assuming data also to be 32 bit instruction to be 32 bit, but uh, we have to kind of explicitly convert the word addresses to byte addresses because the addresses refer are mentioned at the byte level. All right, so, that was uh, just for a so, I missed that point while describing the BQR instruction in a hurry. Let us quickly look at uh, the role of this uh, I mean the use of this memory instructions. So, memory access instructions for example, and uh, there is this immediate field and uh, the source uh, index has to be treated as uh, the base. So, here on this slide you see some typical like you know kind of C code statement where you have an array A the contents of the location 8 8 location of array A is to be added with uh, the variable H and the result is to be put in variable G. So, let us say at us the compiler has kind of associated G with variable uh, with the register number 1 associated the variable H with register number 2 and the uh, base address of A is stored in the register number 3 let us say. Okay. So, now this one is this particular C statement is going to be compiled into a MIPS code and then the index A is referring to the eighth word right uh, start of the of the array A. So, eighth word is going to be require is going to be at offset of 32 bytes okay, so because there are 4 bytes per word. So, that uh, statement is going to be comp uh, converted or compiled into this pair of statements of course, one is for loading something from the data memory because the array A is going to be stored in memory. Okay. Only the base address of the array the pointer to the array A is stored in the register in one of the registers specifically the register number 3. Now, here this L w stands for the load instruction this because I mean gen sometimes you might have a variation called load single byte, but default load instruction is load word L w stands for load word we will we'll go to focus only on load word instruction in this particular lecture. So, look at the syntax it is saying that dollar 4 is specified as 
a target address that is the address of the index of the register in which the word data memory word has to be loaded into. So, why number 4 uh, that seems to be some temporary location. So, you load the something from data memory which is at offset of 32 bytes from the base address stored in register number 3 that is 32 dollar 3. 32 is the is going to be stored in the immediate field of the instruction. Dollar 3 refers to the base register th th that means that number 3 is going to be stored in the SRC 1 field of the first bunch of 5 bits in the load instruction encoding. And uh, this number 4 refers to some register which we are going to use it as a temporary location storage for the 8th word of array A which we have loaded into which we are read from the memory. Okay. Now, for the next instruction what we what we need to do is the, we just need to add to H this uh, memory contents that we have read out. H is going to be store, uh, bound to register number 2 right? that we are assuming. So, we need to add the contents of register number 2 and register number 4 because that is where we have just in the previous instruction uh, the data has been loaded into. So, the add instruction is specifying that the in the destination register number 1 load I mean update the destination register num that is number register number 1 with the addition with the result of the addition of register number 2 and register number 4. Okay. So, this two pair of instructions together is equivalent to the C statement G equal to H plus A 8. Okay. So, this this is the simple illustration of how the immediate field is used the offsets are calculated by shifting by 2 and the base address is stored in one of the registers and the offsets are specified in the immediate field. And so, uh, uh, like you know this shows that such a simple small instruction set can also take care of your need of working with arrays which is the most elementary data structure, but powerful enough to mimic any kind of advanced data structure. So, in principle you can write any kind of program with this simple instruction set. It is in a sense Turing complete. We do not need to go into that, but uh, it will suffice not only for our explanation of fundamentals, but also it is a complete CPU by itself. Although tedious to program very slow, we will have to execute a lot of instructions of the simple kind to do something routine. Okay. So, this was the base instruction 32 is the offset and similarly we can look at couple of other examples, but uh, I will leave it to you to study it on your own. Registers are used uh, compared to the uh, data memory because they are much faster than for access than memory. Typically, in a single clock cycle, you can access a register, but for accessing SRAM or DRAM, you require longer time. Then, the, yeah, so we will not go into that again, yeah, but just a small point is. Uh, if you want to operate on data that is stored in memory, then first you have to load it into registers, operate on it using an arithmetic or logic instruction and put it put the result back in a register and then store it into memory using a store instruction. So, load and store would be required other than the arithmetic instructions or logical instructions. So, if you want to operate directly on memory, if you want to operate on memory locations, data in memory locations, then you have to use a complementary pair of load and store also. So, more instructions need to be executed. So, it is it is quite like you know important that compiler makes sure that uh, much of the computations or arithmetic uh, happens on data like you know most of the uh, data that is re that you require rep repeatedly frequently is stored in is bound to registers rather than is stored in some arbitrary locations in the memory. Arrays obviously have to be stored in memory because arrays are typically large and you do not have large enough set of registers to store big arrays. But local variables if they are to be like you know used frequently, it makes better sense to use them in put bound them bind them to registers. Okay. And uh, similarly, the there is a role of immediate operand and so on. We have already discussed that. The way the steps in instruction execution, what are they like you know during a single uh, clock cycle in which one instruction executes, we will we'll be assuming that uh, our CPU is simple enough that in, in one single clock cycle and a single instruction will, will completely execute. Next clock cycle, the next instruction will execute. 
which would have been fetched from uh, by using the address in the program counter and so on and so forth. So, in the beginning of the instruction uh, execution, program counter will supply its contents as an address to instruction memory. Now, there is a something called instruction memory and there is something called data memory. So, why this uh, two things have to be separate, we will remark on that a bit later. Like you know, so once the program counter supplies an address to the instruction memory, during some sometime during the same clock cycle after a bit of delay, the memory is going to supply the its content at that particular location and that would be the instruction which is to be now processed. So, this is so by this time we can say that we have fetched the instruction. Okay. Next looking at the 32 bit instruction, we identify depending on different types of formats of instruction, we identify uh, which of these parts of instruction refer to register and indices, source or destination. Look at the source indices, supply them to register file and some mechanism there will like you know locate the appropriate read out the appropriate registers and bring them on to out at the output of the register file. Okay. Now, depending on the instruction class, we will use the ALU to calculate either the arithmetic result of what we have just read from the register file or uh, we will uh, treat the information that we have read from the register file and some part of the information from the instruction itself namely the immediate field and use it to calculate the memory address that is required for load or store. We have seen that immediate field and the source index uh, they together kind of specify the address of the memory location in, in the data memory. Okay. So, one part of the address which is the base address has to be read from the register file and the offset is to be is to be obtained from the instruction itself the 16 low, lowest 16 bits of the instruction which are left shifted by 2 bits of course, with the sign extension like keeping the polarity of the offset the same. Okay. So, ALU would be used for arithmetic result or for calculating the address of memory location for load store or also as we have seen in the case of branch instruction branch equal to the target of the branch that location has to be that address has to be calculated again by this same ALU. Okay. Fortunately, like uh, one main ALU is going to be uh, used in one clock cycle uh, depending on whether the instruction is arithmetic or whether the instruction is load store or whether the instruction is branch for one of these purposes. Okay. So, we do not need three separate ALUs for this thing. Okay. At in any given clock cycle on only one of this kind of activity will be happening. Of course, we require a couple of other ALUs that will I am sorry uh, I just made a uh, like this is completely wrong what I said. In fact, uh, we are going to begin with the single cycle CPU and uh, we will be requiring multiple ALUs just the way we just hinted at there is something called instruction memory and something called data memory two separate uh, like blocks of memory. There is we will require multiple ALUs. Okay. And the reason is that in any given instruction, we'll even if it's an arithmetic, if, say if it's an arithmetic kind of instruction, we'll require ALU to do arithmetic. At the same time, we'll require the a, some other ALU to do calculation of the next, uh, like next instruction, right? PC plus four. If it were a branch instruction, then we'll require one more ALU to add, uh, like you know, in the same clock cycle, we'll require one more ALU to add to PC plus four the offset, offset left shifted by two. So, we will require multiple ALUs, we will soon get a clearer picture of that. Okay. After like of course, like you know after we have uh, calculated the address in case of certain memory at, uh, like you know instructions like load and store, we will ac actually access the data memory by supplying that address and either reading uh, taking the data from the data memory for the load instruction or storing the data in some data into the data memory that is on behalf of the store instruction. Okay. And uh, like in the meanwhile during the clock cycle one of the ALUs would have computed P c plus 4 that is incremented P c. This would be a simple ALU which will essentially be adding a constant it can be optimized uh, adder and the result of that is going to be kept ready to be loaded at the end of the clock cycle into the program counter. So, P c is going to be updated with the target address 
uh, or PC plus 4. PC plus 4 is a default and in case of branch address if the branch condition is successful then another ALU would have updated the PC plus 4 I mean would have added offset to PC plus 4 and that result would be ready to be loaded into PC. Okay. So, we will soon see what kind of components will require on the data path, we will require a program counter, a register which will be updated at, at the end of every clock cycle either with PC plus 4 or with a target address or with destination address in case of unconditional jump. We will require memory definitely we require memory, but we here we see that we require instruction memory as well as data memory separate blocks. We will see the reason for that it is more or less obvious, I will just mention it in a minute or so. Then we require a, a, a collection of registers organized in an array of registers which we call in a stand, standard terminology we call it a rec file. Then an ALU, we will require more ALUs as we will see soon. We'll can mention some more things about individual components a bit later. This is how a abstract but a simple picture of the uh, micro architecture will look like. Okay. Note that this is only data path, the controller will describe shortly a bit later like okay. again you see the role of program counter, instruction memory, register file, ALU, data memory. In addition you see two more ALUs which are more specific, one of them is a very specialized adder which is adding 4 the one on the top left portion of this slide and then uh, that uh, evidently that computes PC plus 4 which is the default next program counter address. But in case the instruction is branch then there should be a facility of update upgrading I mean sort of updating this PC plus 4 by adding a part of the instruction the immediate field shifted left by 2 to that by an another adder and that should be routed back to PC. Okay. We will see this is just a picture I mean uh, we are not yet looking at a data flow we will soon look at it over the next couple of slides. But you see the wiring here there has the PC can supply uh, the contents of PC will be going to the uh, to the spe specialized adder which is adding 4. Okay. PC is going to be uh, at the input of program counter we have either the contents of the specialized adder which is adding 4 or the next ALU which would be adding a part of the immediate field offset. Okay. At the output of instruction memory we have a couple of wires, a few wires going to the register file which are basically there are 32 bits, 32 lines coming out of instruction memory because we are reading a instruction which is 32 bit long. A few of the bits going to the re register file specifically those 3 lines that you see are uh, like the 32 uh, la, uh, bits of instruction are coming out over here. Evidently, this is this the this three sets of wires are basically bunches of five wires each, uh, five bits specifying the source uh, the uh, source indices source one and source two and a third like you know in optional cases like add register type indices another bunch of five bits okay which we have seen in certain instruction there is a role for it. This oval the green ovals are multiplexers uh, done in this funny way this is some standard convention used in the book by Patterson Hennessy we will have to get used to it. it just to keep this diagram less cluttered and more abstract. Okay. So, we will come to that any, any way. So, this this blue blocks are like you know this left shift by 2 because uh, we know that we have to take the image uh, some portion of this uh, instruction the 16 bits namely the lowest 16 bits they have to be left shifted in certain situations when we have to use them as offset word offsets in case of memory address calculation for load store or in case of the branch target calculation in case of the instruction like branch equal to. Okay. Then uh, the output of register file corresponding to the two source indices the two two of the registers are read out and they typically are used as inputs to this ALU. Okay. So, this one is used as the first input and this one is typically used as second input, but there is a multiplexer here and that tells us that the second input to the multi ALU can come from where it can come from the left shifted version of uh, part of the instruction which is the which is for the purpose of like you know shifting the immediate of uh, immediate field 
by 2 bits and using it as a second operand to the ALU. This will be happening in case of as you can see load and store instructions. Okay. Similarly, this, this left shifter shifter will be used for calculation of the branch target address adding uh, the offset shifted by the immediate field shifted by 2 to the to PC plus 4 that has already been computed by this particular ALU. Okay. And you see that disk multiplexer will optionally let either the PC plus 4 or uh, this branch target address calculated with the help of immediate offset. Okay. So, this multiplexer is going to be controlled, this is going to be controlled by this situation in the instruction, the, whether the instruction is branch, whether the branch condition has been found to be successful or not. It will all depending on that this multiplexer will choose whether this one is to be set through or this one is to be sent through. Okay. Coming back to the ALU, this is the multiplexer at the second input of the ALU. There is, I have not drawn the complete picture, there are a couple of other sources. In fact, uh, this picture is a bit incomplete because it shows that the immediate field has to be left shifted by 2, but that is for the load and store instructions for address calculation. But for add immediate instruction, uh, the 16 bits of this instruction have to be directly sent over to the second port of ALU. Okay. They do not have, they should not be shifted left by 2. So, I should show another alternate path to this particular, another alternative, alternative possibility to to reach the second input of ALU. Okay. So, this in this manner we can describe the wiring of the data path components. You, for example, ALU output is to be either routed back uh, as data input to the register file. So, that that data which is the result of the ALU computation say on behalf of add instruction or subtract instruction or OR instruction is brought in here and it is going to be stored in a register specified by the by this 5 bits okay, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, anyway instead of showing you vaguely, we can uh, look at more specific pictures uh, for different instructions. For example, here in this slide we have uh, I have marked in thick red, red a flow of data on behalf of some instruction and you should be able to guess for which kind of instruction this kind of flow of data occurs. Okay. So, see what is happening over here, what is being depicted is that from program counter the address is going to the instruction memory. Okay. The program counter contents are also going to this adder, the constant 4 is going to this adder and the result of this adder is that is the one which is going to be routed by this multiplexer back to program counters. That means, at the end of this uh, at the end of this clock cycle uh, the program counter is going to be updated with PC plus 4. So, apparently in this in this particular scenario, there is no role of this particular adder. What it does is of no interest to this particular uh, to program counter. Okay. Now, let us look at the other part. Program counter is going as an address to instruction memory. The contents of instruction memory are coming out here and then 5 bits of them are fed over here, 5 uh, bits are fed here, 5 bits are fed over here. There is an interesting multiplexer here, we will talk about it a bit later. And what we see is that corresponding to this two bits, this pair of five bits, the uh, register file realizes which pair of in registers are to be read out on this 32 lines and on this 32 lines. So, this two th pair of 32 lines, this pair of 32 lines act as source operands to this ALU. ALU will work on the contents of registers which have been read out here on these lines. Yeah, the result of the ALU is going to be sent back through this multiplexer back to the register file. Again, you see that there is no role of uh, anything coming out of data memory. It is not going to be routed by this multiplexer to some uh, place. You know, so, what do you guess? I mean, this is some kind of data flow that is happening on the data, some data processing that is happening in the ALU, a flow of data through this uh, uh, multiplexers in appro uh, from appropriate sources. Okay. Uh, many of these data lines are inactive in the sense that they do not seem to matter. So, like what do you guess? I mean, what must be, what could be the instruction which is causing this uh, data movement and data processing? Yeah, there could be multiple options. I mean, in fact, clearly it looks like it does definitely it is not a branch instruction because there otherwise would have been the role of this. It is a register type instruction because you see that 
all these uh, three sets of 5 bits are of use. Okay. So, this 5 bits, this pair of 5 bits are indicating the pair of source registers, the contents are being available uh, at this uh, pair of 32 bit outputs and the result is coming back into the register file. So, it is a R type instruction where the three operands, I mean the pair of source operands and the result are all uh, like specified with respect to the register file. Okay. The destination is in the register file, the sources are in the register file. So, it is a R type instruction and it could be add or subtract or 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 like you know and depending on how the ALU is configured. Okay. The, there are some control signals to the ALU which will set the ALU in a addition mode or a subtraction mode or logical operation mode. Okay. So, it could be an add instruction or a subtract instruction or a logical or logical and or set less than for example. Okay. Okay. So, text we can look at this example, here is a bit of slightly different data flow. So, again you can guess uh, you see that uh, Okay, I may not be complete in this picture, but here this red thick red line should be carried over to this. So, this means the PC plus 4 is being computed and is being routed back to and kept ready at, at the input of program counter. So, program counter being a synchronous like you know clocked register. Uh, so, at the end of the clock cycle program counter will be updated and in the, uh, in the beginning of the next clock cycle we will be uh, processing I mean we will be effectively using this new address as the address to the instruction memory, next instruction will be fetched out and it will be processed. So, this is what is happening over here. Again, since there is no role of this, th this cannot be a branch instruction, but you see that uh, the instruction that has been rest, uh, read out fetched, 5 bits of this instruction are going over here and uh, although I have not shown it too clearly, uh, the next 5 bits are, are going over here. So, this is the destination, this you can guess, I mean I deliberately not shown these labels because th th this is I am treating it as an exercise for you to do a lot of guesswork and get more familiar with the data path of this and it is basically quite simple, quite easy to work out from scratch and assimilate uh, the understanding of that. So, there is a there's 5 bit index for specifying one of the, uh, one of the source operands, there is a the remaining 5 bit next 5 bit uh, is going to be used as destination address. Okay. Now, look at the ALU, ALU receives the uh, ALU processes as one of the source operands the result from the register file which is basically the first source operand specified by this the index of index specified by this particular 5 bits. Okay. The second set of 32 line, uh, bits from the register file is of no interest. What the other input that ALU is using is coming through this multiplexer, this multiplexer is allowing this input which is basically which is clearly the 16 lower 16 bits of the, inst uh, the instruction that has been read out. So, it is an immediate field uh, okay, uh, shifted left by 2 bits, right? it is passing through this left shift combinational block, it could be a barrel shifter. The result of the ALU it is clearly in this case it must be the uh, address right. Address is being sent out to the data memory and the, the data memory is, uh, is accessed at that address and that contents of data memory are uh, routed by this multiplexer. Unlike in the previous case the, this multiplexer is taking the contents from data memory whereas, in the previous case for the add or subtract instruction. This, this multiplexer was taking the result of the ALU and it was being sent to this input port of data input port of the register file. So, so this is the 32 bit data that is going to be latched into a register specified by this target information. Okay. Over here this multiplexer is the one which is going to take care and not let this 32 bit data which is irrelevant and instead let this immediate appropriately shifted immediate uh, field into the second port and compute the load uh, the address memory address compute the memory address and so on and so forth. Okay. So, this must be since it is reading the data memory uh, like it must be a load instruction if it were writing into the data memory it would be a store instruction. So, this data flow must be for 
this uh, configuration of data path must be for the load instruction, load word instruction. Now, what about this one? Clearly, as you can guess, there is a role of data memory, something is being written to data, something is being provided, here the address is being provided and here the data is being provided. Where is the data coming from? Yeah, the data is coming from uh, this second output of this register file, which basically is the is the content of register specified by this 5 bits, the second set of 5 bits over here. Okay. There is no role of destination address over here, because register file is not being written into, whereas the two uh, like you know two registers are being read out from the register file. First of them is being used as base address, that base address is being added to uh, the op word offset and that becomes the address information for data memory and the data to be stored into the data memory is coming from the second register which is specified by this set, set of 5 bits. Okay. So, again no role of this branch related ALU, this is a store instructions data path okay, scenario. So, this way uh, like you know one can study uh, that this one can analyze that this particular data path is more or less adequate. Of course, there is just one or two minor things I missed out here that the optional like for example, I mentioned that if it were, we were to show add in uh, the simulation or the how the data flows for add immediate instruction, then we would require the 16 bits coming from so 16 of the 32 bits coming from the instruction memory uh, to be routed without shifting into the second port of ALU. So, this multiplexer will have to be big enough uh, to be able to either send this 32 bits or this 16 bits in with sign extension, I did not remark on that or uh, like third the immediate field without shifting or yeah, these three possibilities have to be supported by this particular multiplexer. So, it has to be at least 3, three to 1 multiplexer, this has to be a 2 to 1 multiplexer this is another 2 to 1 multiplexer, 2 input, 1 output multiplexer and so on and so forth. Okay. As an exercise, you can uh, uh, like you know sketch out the trace out the configuration of data path or the data movement for the branch instruction, branch equal to. Okay, it is quite simple. So, with, the, with this I will stop. Just last comment that uh, we need to like un understanding the performance issues, we notice that the longest delay is the one which uh, we know that is the one that determines the clock period. So, the longest delay is along critical path, the critical path is the one which causes the longest delay of combinational logic. And here intuitively is clear that load instruction is the one which has the longest uh, like you know delay, because that is where the lot of uh, data processing and data movement is happening. In particular for the load instruction, instruction memory is being read out, the contents of parts of the instruction that has been read out are going to the register file, register file warms up, it supplies the uh, like you know supplies one result, one operand to ALU, the other operand comes from the instruction itself, ALU computes the uh, address of the memory location from which we have to read the data. So, that address is to be sent to data memory, data memory has to kind of take its own time, uh, generate the uh, read out the data for you and that data has to be routed to the multi register file. So, there are some 5 sub stages in a load instruction. So, this seems to be the longest instruction even compared to longer compared to store and other instructions. So, evidently the critical path is going to be decided by uh, the way data moves for load instruction. And then you see realize that for many other instructions like you know things are much simpler for branch equal to there is much quick, quicker completion of the work of the processing of that particular instruction. So, the instruction the clock cycle which is long enough for the longest instruction must be best might be best full might, might be a bit of waste for the instructions which which would have pro prepared a result much earlier like you know branch target address would have been computed much earlier. By the way there is a role of uh, ALU other ALU in the branch target instruction. Uh, that you can see when you do the exercise yourself. So, th there is a performance issue here, the clock uh, period is bad enough, long enough for accommodating the longest instruction. Okay. It is not feasible to have very vary, uh, varying period for different instructions, okay. sorry for the typo here, spelling mistake to vary, okay. not feasible to vary period for different instruction that is fine. 
but we can improve this performance by multi cycle ex execution or pipelining. So, in the next couple of lectures we will talk about multi cycle uh, version of the CPU, which is where we see the role of uh, finite state machine and that is um, that is what we wanted to uh, like discuss mainly. This was just a background setting up a background of CPU architecture, micro architecture that it is there is a data path and similar data path will be used with a bit of changes and it would be adapted to multi cycle uh, execution with the help of a finite state be, a finite state machine which will act as a controller of the data path. Here if you take a closer look the control of the data path means like you know control of the multiplexers, control of the ALU which is all combinational. In a given cycle knowing the instruction we know completely how the multiplexers have to be uh, uh, like you know controlled, how the ALU has to be controlled and how the memory has to be controlled. So, there is uh, there is no need of any state may, any kind of state information inside the controller itself. Controller is purely combinational. Okay. I will stop here.